sure you love me enough cause I see it If I respond that way is that conceited I'm not trying to come off as the bad guy Last time I played I got cut before halftime But you know I'll never be done Like Tracy McGrady you'll still be the one Been here for a while and I'm still having fun So when I say I hate you I'm just being dumb Hey guys it's Shai It's Asia It's, it's Shai Asia. Asia Did you find a quote? This oh yeah so cool. I found a quote It's about maturity Okay Um, It says it doesn't always come with age In fact it's deeper than age it's about the way you see and understand things, the way you consider others, the way you communicate, the way you react, the things you value, the things you entertain, the way you represent yourself and others as an adult. Everyone grows old, but not everyone is growing up. Facts. Facts. That resonates today because we're going to go into the discussion of having roommates. Yeah. I know as millennials, times get hard and the economy is pretty much trash. So we have to sometimes put our heads and our wallets together just to make it through. Yeah, mm -hmm. rent is expensive. For such a small place too. So sometimes you want a bigger space, but don't have the money to get that bigger space. So mm -hmm. you decide, hey, let's add more people. Yeah. It makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. In our case, it was more so getting out of our parents' house. That was Facts. just the main focus. It wasn't even about the space we were going into. Mm -hmm. It was the space we were leaving. Right. Um, but we could do that. Well, honestly, if we like waited a little bit longer mm -hmm. and did what we needed to do, mm -hmm. we could have did it ourselves. But the fact that we were rushing and this opportunity fell in our laps, we were like... Let's go. Let's go. Right now. Let's stop. Right now. We didn't tell a soul. We got together with the person that we decided to move in with and signed the lease before we even said anything. Yeah. We signed the lease and I came home and I was like, Mom, I'm moving. She said, when? I said, tomorrow. Right. <laughs> literally, literally tomorrow. We moved that weekend. So, hold on. Before we continue, for people who know us, know somewhat about the roommate situation and there's already a video of us kind of talking shit on youtube this is not a talking shit podcast right well this episode specifically because we yeah. will talk shit um this is more of a learning learning experience yeah. and teaching moment right if you want to hear us talk shit i will link the video if you're watching on youtube i'll link it if you're listening go to our youtube and you can watch it there facts um These are, oh sorry but yeah we're just here to help you guys learn from our mistakes yeah some key points to help you guys make the decision or not go through with the decision yeah like if you think you want to move out and you need a roommate mm. you got a lot of thinking to do before you commit because mm -hmm. once you commit you, okay. that's that <laughs> You did it. Yeah. Okay. So our first thing is when you're signing a lease with this person, or make people. sure or people make sure it's the shortest term available, whether it be a year, whether it be six months, make sure it's the shortest term because literally anything can happen and you might want to back out. And if you sign a two year lease like we did, right. you can't back out so easily. So another thing that you should worry about is like, make sure you know who you're moving in with. Yeah. I don't advise the whole moving in off of like, just because you need the money, you find somebody to live with, like advertising it and just yeah. like. Like, hey, anybody looking to be a roommate? let's move in together like don't do that yeah don't first that. of all that shit was always risky as hell because you could be moving in with a fucking axe murderer or sexual killer and you, you don't know so i never been down for that but i want to say that if you do know this person make sure that you've spent enough quality time with them so that you can get a good feel of who they are if you live with them like try to have as many sleepovers as yeah. possible like i feel like we thought we spent enough time. Can't we need to give her a name? Are we doing Tabitha again? Because we did Tabitha. In the we could do Tabitha. Video. We could okay. say Tabitha. We thought that we knew Tabitha. We literally spent all of our free time with her. Like we were a trio. We went mm -hmm. out to eat together. We were always shopping together. She would come over to just fucking watch TV. Like we thought we spent enough time with her, but I don't think enough 
conversation yeah happen we spent more time doing activities to distract us from having to talk yeah one on one to not really learn her so like yes we did spend a lot of time with her but we did not know her and like I feel like there were red flags mm -hmm. when she would talk about her relationships and like and her things. home life from whatever there were red flags but we were like eh we want to get out of our parents' house. Right. We just wanted to get out of our parents' house just as much as she did. And we were like, fine. Yeah. Pay attention to how that person treats other people. Absolutely. You know? So, like, just make sure you get that decent amount of quality time where you're like, okay, I know this person. They can be my best friend. Or if that person is your best friend, make sure you know them in their home life. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's best friends, like, y'all have two different apartments, but y'all decide y'all spend a lot of time with each other. You go over to that person's house a lot. That person comes over to your house a lot. Make sure you know how their home is kept and, like, daily chores and things like that you yeah. have to discuss when and you And make sure, sorry to cut you off, yeah. make sure you're, like, on the same level when it comes to like life in general maturity the, yeah the things you want out of life or expectations going into moving in with each other like and that's where your quote resonates like yeah. maturity and like everybody grows but they don't necessarily like grow yeah. up you know like you guys could have been best friends since the womb but did like you do you know them did, today you grew up you together yesterday you grew up together but did you really grow up uh, together right right um when you guys do finally decide to live together make sure that um you don't let anyone else inside of what happens when you make that decision don't tell other people what i wanted to get more in depth here okay. because sometimes like it's okay to ask people for advice in a situation mm -hmm. that like you want to approach your roommate with a certain conversation but don't know how to go about it so you can ask for advice but specifically for our situation tabitha was family mm -hmm. but through marriage, through marriage through marriage through marriage like mm -hmm. not directly she was my cousin but not blood cousin very very loosely like mm -hmm. <laughs> So, in our situation, her... I mean, she's not dead or nothing. You can't say she was your cousin. Nobody got divorced. Not that you know of. She is your cousin. Yeah. Um, But our problem was she would go to, like, our mutual cousins who were blood-related to me and people in our workplace because we did work with each other mm -hmm. and not ask for advice or be mature about it. She would, like, talk shit. So other people were brought into our problems when it didn't have to be like that. So make right. sure you are with somebody who won't do that. Yeah, because it gets really weird when you have to work and in, walk into work and feel like people are talking about you because of something that your roommate said. Yeah. So now you got to feel uncomfortable at home and at work. Yeah. Or a friend group. You guys all hang out with the same people. It feels uncomfortable when you feel like other people are putting a decision to them or me. Yeah. Where you got to decide. So, so like, like, don't bring people into your shit. Mm -hmm. But if you need advice. advice or something, like, do it in a mature way that doesn't break the bond between that person and other people for mm -hmm. something that they have nothing to do with. Which also ties into another point where I say uh, that I want to discuss how much communication and comprehension ties into sharing a space with someone that you're not intimate with. Because I know, like I said, as millennials or whatever, doesn't matter how old you are, people fall on hard times. You could get a roommate at any age. It doesn't matter. But I know that our target audience is our peers. So I want to say that I know we're getting in relationships and we want to move in with each other, but I'm speaking outside of that, speaking outside of that comfort zone, because I'm pretty sure you already spend enough time with your significant other. I'm saying like a best friend, like we talked about, mm -hmm. did y'all grow, you grew up together, but did y'all grow up together? Yeah. And like, um, just a person that you felt that you could have spent enough time with to make that decision. Make sure that you guys are great communicators 
and make sure that you comprehend what is being communicated. Yeah, because a lot of our fights with Tabitha could have been avoided or did not even have to be fights didn't have to be at fights. all. Like there was simply like a, oh, your boyfriend or whoever threw ice cream in the garbage and it got sticky, we would need somebody to clean that up. Well, whoever is responsible and that it turns into a up that blew oh, up oh it turns into a oh y'all always complaining about something bro just be mature like a lot of the things didn't have to turn into fights like Shay's almost fought her that night over her her or her boy it was it turned out to be her boyfriend it, and he apologized and he apologized but you know she, she wanted to be the hard ass about it very immature and decided to make a fight out of it like it's common sense to if you got ice cream rinse it out before you throw the box away because yeah bitch. don't become roommates with somebody who is super petty because if you do get into an argument they'll do shit like take the microwave yeah. out of the kitchen. So her aunt yeah. gifted us a microwave when oh, we first as we made. Yeah. Because she was kind of my aunt too. Mm -hmm. She was my aunt through marriage. So she gifted us a microwave and once we got into an argument, she put her microwave in her bedroom. So we got another microwave and she was still using it. And still using <laughs> the microwave. So it's like you were petty. And it hurt your feelings because you were petty over something that we didn't need that yeah, much. Like you tried to hurt us and you didn't. Yeah, so all of that tip for tap shit, once it gets down to that, start piling your paper so that you can get out of that situation as soon as possible. Even have the discussion to go, hey, can you afford to pay for this place alone if things don't work out? That that discussion needs to happen because there was a point where we were offered by the landlord to move into the bigger, us as a couple, Asia and I, were offered to move into the bigger apartment downstairs yeah. so that we could settle our differences, but still be paying the landlord that we pay. She decided that she didn't have enough money. Well, she pay, didn't decide. <laughs> she didn't have enough money to pay for that apartment, nor did she want to move her boyfriend in and make him responsible for paying half of the rent. When she, she, she rather want, she did want to move him in. Listen, when she rather had him live with us for free instead. So that's where a lot of the conflict came from, and that's when I talk about comprehension and communication. Because talk with us. If he's gonna be over here every day, make the brother do something. Like, yeah, contribute somehow. Contribute somehow. Take the garbage out. Wash a dish. Something. Even if you're not giving us money, okay, but do something. Because there would be days where he would lay up in her bed and we'd all be at work. And it's like, are we comfortable with leaving him here? Yeah, running up our electricity bill when he does not contribute to it. And y'all know when them Nike Tech sweatsuits became hot. You know y'all don't want to throw those in the dryer. Your boy had his shit in front of the fan. And I'm like, we do not have that much money to be paying for electricity for you to be sitting here drying your Nike tech in the fan. Fans are for people, not clothes. Like, well, if they are for your clothes, at least you're the one paying the bill. Yeah, that, I was going to say, I definitely use the fan that, to dry That hurts me. So, like, make sure you're making enough money for anything to go wrong. Because y'all could be fine and dandy at the beginning of living together. And then in the split second, shit could go left. Yeah. So make sure you are secured. Because even in the beginning months of us living together, we were fine. We even became friends with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Who became her boyfriend after we already moved in. So it's not like right. we moved in as a couple and they moved in as a couple. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a thought when right. we moved in. So it was us three, and the plan was us three. We were going to split groceries. We were going to split bills. We were going to sp split rent. Mm -hmm. Us three. And she went and got a boyfriend and kind of like did whatever the hell she wanted. But in the beginning, it was fine. Me and him could have been best friends right now. Right. Like, I, I called him the male version of me. Right. I had no issues with him. It was when she started manipulating him and the situation and making him behave a certain way that's when I was like mm. 
Because which is where maturity plays a part too because I like it you're you're sometimes your immaturity rubs off on people. Yeah. And I can see even though we don't spend time with him, we're cool with him. We have him on social media, we speak every now and then and he's thriving in his new relationship, either married or engaged. And I I it from the outside looking in I it looks like a much is, more mature relationship. He is so much more mature. Yeah. Because it's like when you're with somebody and they behave a certain way towards other people, you think it's okay to behave that way towards them as well. And it's not, yeah. that's not okay. So you're bringing somebody else in our space that's going to act just like you. And then also you got to be respectful of people's sleeping schedules. Mm-hmm. Talk about when or when it's not okay to have company. I'm not saying that there has to be head of household because if you guys all pay equal rent, you should be allowed to live freely. But I'm just saying a discussion amongst your roommate or roommates, it, it's in order. Like, at least be respectful. If they don't 100% go for the shit that you're trying to sell them, be like, hey, at least I told you. What mm-hmm. I was going to do. You feel what I'm saying? This is my place too. But at least you knew what I was going to do. At least you know what I'm going to do. Don't surprise people. Like we have little sisters. We have little sisters and a niece that we like to have sleep over our, our apartment. You have a boyfriend that our parents do not know. So you have a grown ass man sleeping in the same apartment with little girls that he does not know nor has spent any time with. And you don't know if our parents are okay with that. Our little sisters run around and next to nothing on because it gets hot. They they run around in their underwear. They're comfortable with us. But there's a man in the house. So we tell you that we're having a sleepover with our little sisters and our niece. And tonight is not the best night for him to sleep over. And we come home and he's there. Yeah. And you say he's sleeping over anyway. It's like a big fuck you to us because... That was disrespectful as hell. A lot of the shit she did was a big fuck you to us. It's like, if you're that kind of person, just stack your paper and live on your own. Because having a roommate ain't gonna work for you. If if you know you're self-centered, yeah. And then another thing that I put is... people, some people don't know that they are self-centered. I don't know. Because I honestly truly believe that she didn't think she did anything wrong i don't i don't believe that i i cannot believe that i'm sorry but you know enough about yourself and you've heard enough about yourself and people have complained to you enough that you know that you're a certain kind of person and once you start getting in certain kind of relationships and the same shit keeps happening and the same people keep doing you the same kind of way it's you some people can't come to that realization and she's you know that very you're in, narcissistic. remember the situation where it came to having to leave and she couldn't get a place because her own dad didn't even want to co-sign. That should speak to you right then and there. You know what kind of person you are. Your parents don't yeah. even feel like you're responsible enough. Like they were they were triggered when they found out we were moving in together because they had wanted her to move in with a more responsible person that went to their church or whatever. And that didn't, that person backed out. And that should have been a red flag. So, yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? Because I know the person. I know the person too. Um, You told me. Um, But yeah, like along with comprehension and communication, um, I think you should stand on what's been confirmed. Like when you like like just like we were saying, like she did a lot of big fuck yous to us. Like when you make agreements, keep those agreements. Don't talk and say, Hey, I'm gonna wash dishes on Thursday, you're gonna wash dishes on Tuesday, and then you turn around and leave all the dishes in the sink the whole week. Like that might yeah. be a poor example, but like don't say you're gonna do something or don't agree to go along with something and then just change your mind without talking to anybody about it. Because a lot of things that were set to be in order were chaotic. That Yeah, that was another red flag in the very beginning. Now that I think about it, cause, ooh, my voice just cracked. Um, Cause when we first moved in, we needed a dish rack. That's what Mm -hmm. what it's called. Yeah, a dry rack. She voiced that it would be her responsibility to buy one buy it 
And she, every time she came home, oh, I went to this store, I went to this store, I went to this store, and they didn't have any. So I kind of got fed up with not having a dish, dish rack, whatever. And I went to a store that she said did not have any. The first store we checked. And I found one. Found it. And bought it. Like I was like, oh, uh, you must, you know, I guess you didn't look well enough. Like, if you decided that you didn't want that to be your responsibility anymore, say something. Yeah. So we could stop waiting on it. Same thing. I think the same shit happened with, like, a vacuum cleaner. Like, like yeah. we discussed our role in so many different things in that apartment. Let's just say... It was a two and a half, three bedroom apartment. Yeah, it was a two. And the only thing she left with was whatever was in her room. Yeah, it was a two bedroom apartment, but like our room was kind of split in half. So like we kind of had two rooms to ourselves. Mm -hmm. But like one of them was for Levi. Yeah. And then we got a cat, so it was for Levi and Charlie. But it was a two bedroom apartment, but me and Chase furnished our bedrooms and the living room. The table for the kitchen, I think, was gifted to us mm -hmm. by, I don't remember who. But either way. Him, the landlord. Oh, him, all she left son. with was what she had in her bedroom. Like, she literally contributed nothing furniture, appliance-wise, to the apartment. But had her friends sitting up on everything, spilling liquor on everything, burning hookah holes in the floor, using up stuff. Like, she didn't respect our place. So her friends didn't respect our place. But like, why would you not respect it? And you live here too. That's what I did not understand. Right. Like, it, you're not only disrespecting us, you're disrespecting yourself. She kind of said, sorry. She kind of decided to isolate herself as soon as there were signs of the fact that we weren't just going to fall for her bullshit and just say yes to whatever she decided. Right. Like she wanted to get away from her parents because they told her what to do. And she, she felt like we were telling her what to do. But it's like we want the same level of respect that you would give to. Actually, she don't. Let yeah. me. I'm not. Gonna... <laughs> we want the same res level of respect from you that we give to you. Right. That's what like, I was trying to say. Yeah. Like you, you live here too. So I think she decided to isolate herself and not and rarely be home and not furnish the place and just not give two shits. Basically only come home to sleep, eat, and fuck. And she would say, oh, you guys are this and you guys are that. I'm basically living in my bedroom, treating it like a closet, and I'm all locked up. You did that. Yeah. Nobody else did that. She we furnished the living room, but we didn't say you couldn't sit on the couch. Like, this is your place, too. We're just putting love into it because we live here. We want to come home after work and feel comfortable. We want to come home and love the space that we're in. You're not putting any of that energy into it. She just wanted a space for, like, her friends to come over and fuck shit yeah, up. Yeah, she basically wanted to be taken care of. Like, she wanted a party house. Right. But when she realized that you have to take care of the house once your party leaves... Right. And she she wasn't having that. And we even did the respect, respectable thing as treating it like we were three roommates and we weren't a couple. Yeah. Because we could have easily just said, split let's split the half. bill in half. Because you have a room, we, we have, have a room. room. Like, right. what, what are we paying extra for? Right. So we so she paid, Asia paid, and I paid, paid. We split that three ways. We didn't have to do that because half is yours and half of half is ours. Whatever me and Asia have, we have together. We sleep in the same bed. We sleep in the same room. We, we share our room. closet together. Yeah. In actuality, you have more space than the both of us because we have to share our space together. And she had, and her room was bigger than ours. Facts. Like, if our room was not split in half, they would probably be the same size. But her room was definitely bigger than ours, right. paying half half of the rent. And we didn't have a closet. We did not have a closet. She did. She did. So maybe her room was bigger than her ours. Her room was bigger than ours. And we had a dog. So right. like, why would you not give us the bigger room? Right. We we settled for so much in that apartment. Like we settled because 
we thought that we were going to be happy as long as we had each other, yeah. as long as we made things work, as long as we communicate, as long as we stayed close. Like, yeah, the bedroom situation didn't really bother didn't me bother. at all because I was like, ooh, we're, we're the three best friends that anyone could have. We're going to like right. hang out in the living room, in the kitchen or whatever, and like only use our bedrooms to sleep, but it didn't go that way. fucked that up. <laughs> right. Like, she used us to have a place. Yeah. Because we were helping you. You were paying, you were basically paying a small portion of the rent because we decided not to actually go half with you. Yeah. So, you had all the money to go shopping and do things that we couldn't afford to do because our money is our money. Mm -hmm. A lot of people be like, oh, y'all have each other, y'all have each other. So, y'all incomes are double what everybody else's income is. Like, true but not true because it's like... Like, we still have to feed two people. Right. So, like, our groceries are more. Um, right. We still, yeah, no. Like, y'all could go shopping and be limited but going shopping, like, with groceries. We have to buy for two. We ha You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, we have to have enough space for two. So, yeah, we're going to have the bigger apartment and all that stuff like that. So... Like, she had enough room in her room to have, like, a mini kitchen. Like she, I said apartment, but I meant room. Yeah. She, like, she had her microwave because she took it. She yeah. had another refrigerator in there. Mm -hmm. Like, like <laughs> she really lived in her room. Yeah. It was a dorm room. It was a dorm. That's what she wanted, though. That's what she wanted. She, she wanted, just wanted she to be. She wanted a frat house. Yeah. She wanted to be from up under her parents. Because she also knew from hanging out with us before moving in with us that me and Shaise throw parties. Like we were big on parties. So she thought that that's what it was going to be like. And yeah, we did throw parties there. We threw lots of fun parties. Except with people that we knew respected us and that we allowed into our homes because we could trust them to come into our homes and not fuck shit up. Yeah. But she thought it was going to be like all parties all the time. Drinking all the time, smoking all the time, and mm. not give a fuck about the space that we live in. But and if that's your personality, right? In. And if that's your personality, find somebody to match find that. Find somebody to match that exactly. Like if that's what you want to do where you live, then that's what you want to do. No shade. Set the boundaries but, before you sign the lease. Right. You like to party all the time and fuck shit up. I like to party all the time and fuck shit up. Cool. Let's do that shit together. But mm -hmm. if somebody else is more responsible than the other it's y'all are gonna butt heads so you gotta make sure you're on the same page yeah and like the thing with her boyfriend again like Asia said is like we all met him together yeah you know what I'm saying like she claims that she's known him forever but he ain't even know her government name he called her the name that she had on Facebook so, and her name on Facebook changes like all the time. All the time. With whoever I, she dates, yeah. she takes on their last name. She either has her middle name or somebody else in the family's last name. Or if she's dating somebody for three seconds, she changes it to her boyfriend's name. Yeah, or girlfriend. Or girlfriend. But yeah, so a lot of people asked us too with that situation. Is it because they're in a heterosexual relationship you feel uncomfortable? No. I don't give a fuck about your that, that sexual orientation. Right. That though. was a stupid like, that was question. So dumb. Who asked that? Like, I think I think it was her dad at one point in time. I think it was the landlord at one point in time because we were discussing because I discussed how I was uncomfortable that he had walked out in the towel. And like, because it's like the principle of it, like yeah, you're walking respect around that here, you live like, with you women, live here, and you don't and pay you not don't, one bill, right? And he made me to work late to work one morning from showering. I used to have to wake up early in the morning to go to work, and he was showering on a night that he wasn't even supposed to be spending the night. So you should have been home. You shouldn't have been in my shower first thing in the morning, Playboy. Like, so. You made me late to work because I had to wait for you to shower to get in the bathroom. And that yeah. pissed me off. And it was like when we <coughs> discussed with her like when it's an appropriate time for her boyfriend to stay over or whatever. They were they were cool about it. Agreed. At first, they agreed with it. Agreed. They were they were going along with it. What are you hearing? Yeah. <laughs> they were going along with it and everything was fine. Everything was cool. But then they would do little things like I wake up um, early, like 
we have the same job. So we're work we're waking up at the same time to get to the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. I woke up a little bit earlier than her one morning and I hear footsteps going downstairs and I'm like, huh, she left to work early. Uh, but no, because when I got out of the bathroom, she's coming out of her room. I'm like, okay, homeboy slept over last night. And clearly. was sneaking out. Mind like, you, this, yeah. he, this, he all looked like seven feet tall. So you can't sneak down those steps. <laughs> Especially, our steps were kind of noisy. Like, they were squeaky. It was an old ass house. You feel me? Like, our apartment used to be someone's house. Like, it was a two family house. So, yeah, like. He's sneak the whole sneaking around shit. Like we're grown as hell. Yeah. Speak up. Say what you feel. And if he was gonna sleep over that night, like if it got too late and he missed the train, let us know. Funny. Communicate. Like don't. Yeah. Mm. And then when we'd approach her and say, "Hey, this happened last night. We don't respect that. You know, there was trash. I feel like it was his trash. He spent the night." He didn't spend the night. You could even text my check my text messages to say where he said I love you and I don't get to spend time with you. Staged. Yeah, you can. I didn't it. even read that. She but is staged. the type. She is the type to the stage stage conversation. Text, yeah. yeah, like, hey, text me real quick, like you're leaving or right. <laughs> make it type. look late. Like... And then another thing. Oh, talk about pets. If you move in and that person has a pet discuss with them whether or not it's okay to get another pet yeah because asia and i we come with levi like we've had levi our whole lives our whole of relationship yeah he he was our kid like you know we got together and decided that we wanted to share love with someone or something else so mm -hmm. we got a pet and why she decided to go get a dog and nate y'all tell me where y'all seen a shiba inu get along with a bully like a bulldog like a Le levi was he levi is the type of dog to get along with an animal that he knows when they start out smaller than him and she did get him as a baby but kept, but, him, but sheltered. kept him in the room because that's where she stayed so that's where the dog stayed they never got and to they meet. didn't get to meet so it's like don't and like she did not discuss the fact that she was getting a new dog like, I don't care. If you want to get a new dog, that's your life, that's your prerogative, that's your money, whatever. Do what you do. Discuss it with us. Right. And yes, you did get it as a puppy. Let him meet Levi so they don't grow up with issues. Right. Because now we got to hear barking coming from one room and not barking coming Levi from another. Bark. Levi doesn't bark. So, and that's another thing. I know when someone else is in her room or not in her room based on her dog barking. So, her dog told on her a lot of the times when he was there. Or when he would leave because the dog would feel a way about being locked in the room all day by mm -hmm. himself. And that's another thing. Levi has full range of wherever we live. It's his apartment too. Yep. So I don't want to feel like my dog has to stay in a confined space because my dog and your dog didn't meet each other. So when your dog is roaming around the house, my dog can't. That's unfair. So like, yeah, like communicate. That That's something else that ties into communication. Yeah, I also yeah. wanted to go back to when you said uh, like save your money and make mm -hmm. sure like you have what you need if anything goes wrong because mm -hmm. you did mention that we were having our differences mm -hmm. us and her not uh, not you and me but us and her we're having our differences and decided to move to the downstairs apartment which was bigger and we could afford it because we did what we did we and made, saved our we, money we made sure that we could do that All right but she couldn't financially keep the apartment and she tried so hard like posting on social media who's looking for a roommate or i'm looking for a roommate and nobody wanted to live with her so we should have been like fuck <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have lived with her well we were like that we did mm -hmm. say that but the fact that she couldn't take care of the apartment herself without us without us sucked because we wanted to remove ourselves from the situation and remove ourselves from the confrontations, the anxiety. But the, we couldn't get out of we, the lease because we, we couldn't pay it out or have right. We couldn't we couldn't pay out the lease and we couldn't find her another person that wanted to live with her. Mm -hmm. But then there was another option of a cheaper apartment in the basement, and she was like, "Oh, I'm gonna move to the basement." But she had this conversation with the landlord 
without us at first. Mm -hmm. I guess he was just presenting her with the option. And he texted us that that conversation took place mm -hmm. before she even told us. So that day she came home with her boyfriend and I guess we had we had been in a fight or whatever. So she wasn't talking to us, but she was coming up the stairs with her boyfriend like, oh, we got the apartment. We we about to be out of here. We about to start packing, like gloating. gloating to us or gloating around us to make sure that we could hear that she's on to the bigger and better things. Like she just, oh, sorry. I didn't think it would be worked up like four years later, but we have we literally haven't seen her since June 2018. Mm. But talking about this is like she took a lot out of my life. Mm -hmm. So and caused us to realize what our anxiety could be. Yeah, and my anxiety was at the worst living with her. And I hadn't been physically ready to fight anyone since I was a teenager. So, me as a 23, 24 year old woman. I hadn't been physically ready to fight anybody since ever. Yeah. Until this yeah. whole thing. And it's like putting your hands on people is not the right choice. But it comes to when somebody big talks, like they ready for it. And the level of immaturity and the taunting. Right. And like, Shay used to be like, oh, so then when you get home, we could square up and like, whatever. Like, and me, I'm a, I'm sorry to cut you off, but me, I'm that kind of person where it's like, I'm going to fuck you up behind respect. And we could be cool after. We yeah. fight. We get it out of our systems. We both was fighting about our respect. It may seem foolish, but sometimes when you're hot-headed and you have a temper, hitting may be the only outlet. <laughs> I'm sorry. And she, but was, like, she was a big talker. She was okay. She was like, all right, so... Boom. Uh, all right but she never came home she every time home. Her, her and Shay had those conversations she didn't come home oh it only took one time and what'd she do she went to go tell her dad that she felt threatened and her dad told the landlord so the landlord had to come over as he would have to all the time and be a fucking mediator which i hate it because we're all grown women we yeah. don't need the landlord or your parents to try to come over and mediate situations that spoke on the maturity level right then and there yeah um, but yeah, going back to her moving out, we were so excited because like we got to keep the apartment. We mm -hmm. could get an extra room and we liked it because we had attic space. Like it was the perfect space for us. So we were like, fine. She's I have you to this day miss that apartment because yeah, it had so much potential. Yeah. What we could have done if it was just you and I. Yeah. And it was so close to everything too. I love, I love that apartment. Um, so she went downstairs to go see what the basement apartment looked like and it wasn't up to her standards of being a social media bougie bitch. So she didn't take it. But she you said no shit talking. Well, I said <laughs> most of the shit talking is in the previous video. But okay. listen, she Ain't no she had me fucked up for two yeah. and a half years. So, yeah. some shit talking is going to happen. I mean, there's no hate in my heart for her. There's no hate because... I don't hate her. I, I just hate the That situation, situation and how much it took out of us and the fact that we could have been still good friends to this day had we not jumped, dived into that experience yeah. without knowing what was going to happen. Yeah. And also, financially, she was a big talker. Spending a lot of money on things that if you can't afford to keep your house kept and you're buying new sneakers, you're paying for this trip and y'all riding around in rental cars and all of that, like cut the social media, living for social media life out and take care of what you need to take care of at home. Because at the end of the day, when it comes down to discuss splitting up, you should be able to afford it if you live it on the internet like you could afford yeah, whatever you, you, you want. You live in like you can afford it, so why can't why you? can't you? And then when it came time, she from the day one, from the start when she was saying, Oh, eventually if I move out, you guys could keep this apartment. It's cute for y'all, it's nice for y'all, y'all could keep it, y'all could keep it. It wasn't even an it. if. It wasn't she said when, she said when I move out, I'm not yeah, I'm said, not gonna like I don't this want this apartment, so I'm gonna move out. You guys can either keep it or move on. Like you do what you do, but I'm not yeah, staying. When it comes time to renew the lease, I'm not staying. So we had that in our head. 
for yes. the next year going forward. Too. Like counting down the days to the end of this fucking two year lease, she's gonna leave. We're gonna have this apartment to ourselves. We can take over her room and do what we want to do. Like we had plans. We had plans. Then she comes in and breaks the news. Yeah. Um. So finding an apartment is really hard. And then finding an apartment with a dog is even harder. Like we didn't know that. Like we didn't know. You're looking in all the wrong places because you want to move somewhere for your social life and not for your betterment. Yeah. So, of course, you're not going to find anywhere to live. Like whenever we didn't have anywhere to live, we stayed with somebody for the most like six months and then boom out, found another apartment because we were looking, we were trying, we were looking for apartments that allowed dogs. And she was apparently looking for an apartment way before her lease was up. Right. But then like once it was closer to our lease coming up, Suddenly she, you can't she do it. told the landlord like she can't find anything. So the landlord asked us if she can stay, stay with in us. our apartment because- right. Essentially, it was our, our apartment now. Right. And we were like, fine, we're not going to like put it yeah. out on her ass. Like, we were being nice Because at this point, we we're living. Said no. no, because at this point, we're living without a lease. And that's how nice he was to us because he knew you and I were good on our shit. Yeah. So he didn't make us sign a lease before she got out. So we were living the last few months in that apartment with no lease. Yeah. Because we the wanted, kids are they're really. walking up there. They always do. Because we res- tried to respect the situation, even though we felt the way we felt about her, we were never gonna kick her out on her ass. Yeah, you know. So looking back, we probably should have signed a lease. But also, that's another story. Because that's another story for our journey. Yeah. Yeah, that's another story. So, because he was a, he was good and bad at the same time. He was hot and cold. Yeah. And it's like, you know. But, like, he, like, every time we had a confrontation, like Shay said, he would always come in and play mediator because it would always get back to him on some immature shit. Mm -hmm. And he knew her because he was friends with... That was me? Mm -hmm. I thought I put my volume down. I didn't. Um, What was I saying? Oh, he knew her because he was friends with her dad. So, but he didn't know her. She, he didn't know how she really was and the fact that she was the root of all the issues that oh, we were having yeah. despite what she was saying. Because she would always manipulate and twist words. And before you continue with that, I do, like, I am very grateful for the experience of having our first apartment the way we did be- because it was the fact that he knew her family and he was a friend of her family that he gave us that amount of space for the amount of money that he gave us yeah so our first apartment was it was a it was a steal it's basically what we pay now for a three bedroom yeah and all this free range space so like it it was good for new york for new york and the neighborhood that we lived in fantastic like we tried to stay in the neighborhood uh but yeah so it was one of the times that he came to be our mediator where the conversation went left what you're like your voice is cracking and you're like shaking your yeah you're getting warmed up about the situation <laughs> take a take a breath before you continue to speak i'm fine relax your face is red i'm fine i'm okay. actually getting like physically hot maybe i don't know whatever yeah. um but yeah it was one of the times where he came in to play mediator where the conversation went left and he saw her true colors and he went off on her like oh i i, I see what everybody's talking about like you actually are the way everybody says you are yeah and, and we're that, being nice by not telling y'all what he said yeah we're not gonna do that but yeah he had a few choice words for her very much so and we and, agree yeah with those choice words <laughs> <laughs> so that's when the apartment essentially became ours and he gave her a set time to get out after asking he us she, he said she's gotta be gone yeah she starts so, like, it started with him asking if she could stay with us to him telling her she needs to leave in, like, a, a month he gave her. Yeah. So, that's where that went. All right. So, I, I just want to, because you guys might be wondering, even though it doesn't really speak on, like, the topic per se, but let's just jump beside the topic and tell you exactly how that happened. What? 
how that happened for him to have to black on her oh. because it started as a table discussion mm -hmm. as to where we were all gonna go like he looked out for us like an uncle like you yeah. know he didn't just treat us like we were tenants yeah and you he know? had like friends in real estate so he was like looking out for telling us telling her that i will that he was gonna help her find a place yeah like but she wasn't having it like she I he was a well-known man and he used it to the advantage to help us yeah so it started as a table discussion where we were talking about our time limit of staying there, what he was going to do with the property once we were gone and didn't release, X, Y, Z. This girl had her mom on the phone listening in to the conversation and her mother decided that she didn't like what she heard. Yeah. Like, so her not mom, on speaker, like she just had the phone, like she called... Her mom. her mom and like just had, had the phone, phone so, that she, so that her mom could hear what we were talking about right so and unbeknownst to anybody like she just had the tape the phone sitting on the table or on her lap or whatever yeah. secretly basically like secretly recording the meeting so her and her mom had their choice words about the situation but it's not like anything bad was no said it was no. just the fact that she told us that she wanted to leave. I guess she didn't tell her mom that. Right. So when he was saying that he was going to help her find another place or when she needed to get out or whatever, her mom thought that this was coming from left field. Right. That's probably what that was. So, you know, mom tells dad and dad, which is friends with the landlord, goes, calls him and goes, hey, what's the situation about my daughter? Like, I don't agree with, you know, and it almost, she almost caused a freaking rip in her dad and the landlord's friendship Yeah. for running back to her parents and telling them whatever she wanted to tell them. So because a longtime friend, which was her dad, had to go to his friend, which was our landlord, and say some things that our landlord did not agree with, I tell you, this man with like two busted knees and a fucked up lower back, I ain't never seen him run up the steps so fast. Before without he could, his cane. Without his <laughs> cane. Before he could even leave the property. Yeah, he she ran, didn't, but she, she didn't, didn't even, even wait. wait. Before he was off the property, he ran back upstairs and said, that's it. X, Y, Z, you've got to go because of what you just did. Yeah. And that's when we knew. Oh, the apartment is ours. Period. So we got hype off of that. But it turns out she couldn't hold up her end of the bargain financially. So, it, you know, we basically lost out on something. And he decided to go other ways with more promising future to his pockets. And I'm not mad. It's just... Yeah. Uh, yeah, communication. So basically, at the end of the day, we all had to leave. Um, if you want to watch... The yeah. other video to get more information about that you could watch the other video as far as communication goes i'm gonna keep saying communication y'all sorry if y'all getting tired of it but it is key and living with anyone actually but also bill payments because say you don't watch tv why are you going half on cable with somebody as far as like electricity goes yeah. and stuff like that you can't tell who's using more so i understand that but as far as like, you know, getting your own cable box and then telling your roommates that they can't watch certain channels or order movies or whatever if they're not going to pay for it and the Wi-Fi situation, like discuss what additives are needed. The only reason we have cable now is because the complex we live in offers it mm -hmm. for free to the tenants. But we stream. So all we did was use Wi-Fi and electricity, as far as electricity goes, she decided to leave early so she didn't pay us for the month that it was due before. Yeah. So, like, she left us with that bill on her own and then had debt collectors calling me for whatever she was Yeah, owed. like, why did Why are debt, debt collectors, collectors calling call, me, yeah. calling me asking number? for you? Like, yeah, it was weird. Like, like she, just make sure y'all's roommates are mature. Why did she tell... Why did she give people I your number? Know. Like, yeah, just make sure y'all understand each other. Come to a dope agreement where everything is squared away. And, like, keep your home clean. Respect the people that you live with. And just do your best to be a good person. Not even just a good roommate. Because if you're a good person, like, you genuinely are going to be a good roommate. 
yeah. because you keep up with yourself, you keep up with your home, you keep up, you respect people. Like, your character speaks a lot for how you keep your home. Yeah. So just just watch out for those things. Um, Is there anything else you wanted to say, babe? No, I just wanted to reiterate the make sure you guys are on the same page with literally everything every, every before thing. you sign anything. Yeah, just and like we said earlier, make sure you sign the lease when yeah. it comes to the least time possible. If y'all some, some places y'all offer, get past that, I'm sorry, y'all get past that six months and y'all feel y'all good. Y'all want to do another six months? Good. Y'all get past that year, feel like you want to live another year? cool but that was not our case yeah we we signed a two-year <coughs> lease because we thought that we were like all homies and we were like a year is too short because then we're gonna have to find somewhere else to live again mm -hmm. so we were like two years is the best but it was not <laughs> so we just want y'all to take from our experience like our learning experience and um just learn what we learned because I don't want y'all coming back to us like, oh, I got this roommate and this is happening. Actually, and no. I want <laughs> I want whoever is listening or watching, if you guys have a roommate situation that you want. I'm saying after. Them, like, uh, after you listened to this podcast and learned all the red flags and took all the keynotes down. And you still decide to go do that. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -mm, learn. If you ha if you are currently in a roommate situation and need advice mm -hmm. or just want to tell us stories... Let us know if you are thinking about moving in with somebody and you want to ask us questions. Let us know, you know, just hit us up. We have Instagram yeah. and Twitter. It's Shy Asia. Yeah. So, yeah. And if you want to get a full in-depth story about the whole situation, like specific things that happened while living with her, then you can go watch the video. I'll, like I said, I'll link it if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening, go to our YouTube and... Find yeah, it. and one more thing said that situation can alter your mental state completely. Yes. When you get in the, it's just like a relationship. When you get in the wrong situation and you can't leave out of it in the snap of a finger without losing anything, you you feel trapped. You feel and like trapped. Your mental is fucked. My mental was yeah. fucked. Anxiety, mood swings, attitude problems, not sleeping at night. Then having to go to work and already feeling on edge. So anything that happens to you at work, it's I was yeah. on go at work. Yeah, I was ready to fuck up whoever stepped in my space the wrong way at work. No, but me too because she worked with me <laughs> and we had mutual friends at work, and some of which she convinced and manipulated to not talk to me. Mm -hmm. Which then, when she got fired, they. Decided, decided, oh, you know, we see in her what you always tried to tell us, cuz. Right. Uh, no. No. Yeah. Nah. Everybody knows now what kind of a person she is now that it's been time and she hasn't been there. Yeah. But, you know, it's to each his own. And I hope that she's even doing better. Because, like, I, of course, I ain't going to say nobody's name. But if y'all already know who we're talking about, she is a mom now. Yeah. So, please be better a better person for your child. Like, don't put yourself in the same situations that you've always put yourself in to have an ugly outcome. Because now, you're not even just living for you. All that selfish shit is out the window. Yeah, because now it's like, imagine your daughter going through what you put other people through. Mm -hmm. Just think of it like that. She's not listening, but... You don't even know. I don't... I honestly we don't, don't know. know she's listening. You know? But... Think if you have children or in the future want to have children or if, even if you don't and you have like other children in your life who you love so much and think Look about your, your actions what? Look your lips okay. think about your actions and think about would you want that same situation happening to the children in your life when they get older yeah like just if you know, or if you're trying to work on yourself, don't move in with somebody else. If you see a person and they're trying to work on themselves, don't live with them just yet. Because you got to love, it's just like any kind of relationship. You got to love you first. You got to yeah, respect you first. Yeah, you got to love you first. You got to respect you first. Because you're sharing somebody else's space. And energy is transferable as fuck. 
So don't go fucking up somebody else's aura because yours ain't right. And she had really bad energy. Really bad energy. Really bad energy. And if anybody knows me, I am not a confrontational bitch at all. And that's exactly what I'd be trying to say. Like, if you have a problem with Asia, not even saying it's because I love her, but if you have a problem with Asia, you just ain't right within yourself. Like, because I everybody that so knows nice. her <laughs> knows that she's the sweetest, most kindest, most... You know, Asia will give you the shirt off of her back. She may question why she has to, <laughs> but she gonna do it. And So, like, to get me to that point... You gotta you, be a bad person. You really got literally. me fucked up. You yeah. really got me fucked Not up. Not even just because having you fucked yes, up. I you just gotta so be nice. a bad person. Yes, I am so nice. And yes, I hate confrontation. But when it comes to it, don't fucking count me out, bitch. Yeah, don't. <laughs> don't, don't count me out. The worst thing you can do to Asia is sleep on her don't and be disrespectful. Me. Don't do that. Because if you sleep on her, you gotta deal with her. And if you disrespectful, you gotta deal with both of us. Period. So, with that being said, if y'all don't want no drama, don't stay out of the roommate situation. Yeah. I advise you to grow. Um, unless you're super duper confident. Like Absolutely I said, sure. Like I said, they check all the boxes and you're on the same page. But right. make sure you're on the same page. Right. Have these conversations before moving in. Make up scenarios in, and, like, ask the person what they would do in certain scenarios. Like, make make sure. Right. Make fucking sure. What I want y'all to do after listening to this and or watching this is if you feel like your financial stability is at the point where you need a roommate, get a piece of paper or go on your phone and write some notes and give yourself a list of qualifications that your roommate needs to have. Yeah, and stuff that you will you know, not put up with also. Yeah, you got to give yourself your do's, your don'ts, things that you can compromise with and things that you won't compromise with. Like, give your, it's just like you moving into a new apartment. You know how y'all got lists that you want to check off and see, ooh, do they got screens in that apartment? Ooh, do that water work this way? What's the water pressure for the shower? Uh, uh, uh. It's the same thing with moving in with somebody. Give yourself boxes to check off. Because yeah. if you don't do this shit thoroughly, I promise you, you gonna, you're going to hurt from it. Because there's still some healing that I have to do from that situation. Like, I look at everything with skeptics. Like, I have... A word? Yeah, I have trust issues. Skeptic is a word? What do you call being skeptical? I know skeptical is a word. <laughs> skeptic is a word. <laughs> Wow. Oh, wow. Nice. This isn't something new. <laughs> this isn't new that you learn words, vocabulary words for me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like, if you go into the situation like we did just because you want to get out of your parents' house or you want to get out of another situation that you're in financially or your living situation, don't just dive into something because it seems like a good idea and it looks like a good idea. Check that shit through. Thoroughly. Also, when yes, have your boxes or whatever that you want checked, but also make sure that you are in the same same that you're on the same page when it comes to the future. How long you guys want to stay together? That I was going to say that. Yeah, like what? Give yourself a move after? out day. Yeah, what's going to happen after this? Yeah, like don't wait till move out date comes to start looking for apartments. Yeah. Give yourself time. Like, give yourself a few months in advance because finding an apartment or a house or that shit don't take a day. You got to give yourself months in advance. So give yourself times and dates and, like, it's all organization. Mm -hmm. You have to be organized when it comes to that shit. Like, and if you're not organized, <coughs> just make sure that you're not you're with somebody who is on the same page as you. I'm going to yeah. just keep saying that. But yeah, because you, you might... keep saying on the same page and I keep saying communication because one yeah. reaches another because we've you learned... You to communicate to know that you're on, on the, same the same page. page. Exactly. Like, we've learned, like, from this experience that <clears throat> even close friends, we thought, like, maybe we should have this person live with us. Nah, we don't want to do the roommate thing no more. We've had chances yeah. to have other roommates and that one situation ruined it for us. Yeah. Ruined it for us. Like, there's been, like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. It's been a point in time where we not, do we say homeless? Kind of, yeah. Because we're not paying bills on our own. Where we've had to stay 
with our parents because we refused to get another roommate. Yeah. When getting a roommate would have just been easier than living with our parents for the time being. We are scarred. Never scarred. having roommates ever again. Even <coughs> though even though we know what to do now, mm -hmm. I just still I can't cuz let one thing It left a bad up. taste. It left a bad taste. Yeah. Like yeah, we know that all we need is each other and we we going to tough it out. Yeah. Because, like, there are other people who are hella codependent, and there's people that are lonely and shit like that. And, like, people from the point of moving out of their parents' house go into the situation saying, I don't want to live alone. I'm not the kind of person that could live alone. But trust me that once you've had a bad roommate situation, you won't value the shit out of your alone time mm -hmm. and your accomplishments on yourself. Like, see how far you can do, go or, you know, see, uh, love on yourself and teach yourself new experiences before you buckle, before you give in to having a roommate. And if you do give into that, make sure you got your, all your ducks in a row. Yeah, because especially like... <clears throat> This day and age, rent is so expensive that you're probably going to have to get a roommate at some point. Mm -hmm. Rent in the tri-state area. Like, it's got a lot of people. Not even the tri-state area. Yeah. Like anywhere. Anywhere. Because I know a lot of y'all moved up to Miami with y'all friends and moved to a different state and want to go have fun in the sun and all that shit. Just, man, just communication, comprehension. Make sure you're on the same page. Like... We could say this time and time again, but we don't want y'all scarred the way we got scarred. No. Nah. It's so life-altering that to the point that it's still a topic today. Like, dude, and, and there was never any closure. Like, we lost out on a potentially good friend slash cousin because of the situations that occurred. And that I guess that's just all I got to say about that one. Yeah. Um. But before we end the podcast, I want to say again, if you have any advice questions or roommate stories to share with us you can in, uh instagram dm us mm -hmm. or hit us up on twitter but we're not really on twitter that much i guess i can start being trying to check my twitter more but yeah as a safe bet don't like where we hit us up on instagram make twitter a last resort for valentine's day we're coming up with an episode where we are giving advice kind of mm -hmm. about relationships so if you have any questions about relationships or if you need advice when it comes to relationships, hit us up, mm -hmm. Instagram DM, let us know. Because that episode is coming up real soon. Valentine's yeah. Day is almost here. If you got drama going on with your significant other and you want to resolve it before the day comes. Let us know. Let us know. You want to be a guest? Let us know. So I hope y'all picked up a lot of knowledge from this. Because, again, like, we don't come on here just to vent. Like, hell yeah, we're venting, but we want y'all to, like, learn with us, grow with us, discuss with us, and, you know, take something from this. That was that? Yeah. All right. So, it's Shayeju signing out. And with that being said, depending on what time you're listening to this, try not to have a messy Monday. Peace. Wanted to win your affection, I play for it. Is it a cliche to say you're my favorite? We can go shop to you, drop and I'll pay for it. Let's find a moment that's sweet and just say.